I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Brand Power Analysis. Today, I have Kirby Porter on. Kirby, tell me a little bit more about yourself. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm Kirby Porter. I'm the founder of New Game Labs, where my mission is to help sports creators grow as business leaders and entrepreneurs. I played basketball in college at Harvard. I started my career in sports marketing and venture capital and was always creating content out of passion along the way. And then in 2022, I decided to take that passion a step further with New Game Labs. So that's what I'm doing today. Nice. I love it. I love it. So what made you what made you kind of decide to take that leap? I think that's something that is going to be at the hence of this podcast channel, um, especially with a lot of the, the information that we both utilize to help educate other creators out there um, in the sports world. But why don't you kind of give a guiding light on to like some of the the hurdles or the leaps that have helped you kind of take that next step in the evolution of, of your purpose. Yeah. Thank you for asking. I think, um, you know, things happen before they happen. Right. So like I started before I became an entrepreneur, I started a podcast three years or four years prior. I did not start that podcast with the intent of becoming a founder eventually, but starting and pursuing that passion early on, I started to build a really great network of a lot of the people that I work with today. I started to really grow my brand that really set up future job opportunities and the business opportunities that I have today. I built skills. A core part of my business today is podcasting. Um, I learned how to build things from zero to one, which is what being an entrepreneur is time and time again. So I, I say that things happen before they actually happen because starting that podcast was kind of like a training ground. And so I really encourage people, um, whether you have entrepreneurial aspirations or not, I actually did not start my career thinking that I would be a founder one day. Um, but whether you do or not, like create things as a way to grow and develop yourself professionally. Yeah, I think that's... Uh... I think that's a the spectrum of a lot of things in life, especially with entrepreneurship. Um, you know, uh, the fear of failure and kind of setting out and afraid that I'm not going to start it because I'm not going to do this. But uh, as you're aware, I mean, you went into a podcast not realizing what you were going to kind of do later on. I mean, I feel like I kind of have the same spectrum. You know, I, I was in the corporate world for years in this in the sports realm, and I didn't know I was going to become a business owner. And then it just kind of happened. But it was those learning experiences, I think, along the way that you're like, you know what, like, I enjoy this. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. Exactly. And you don't know what you will enjoy until you try new things. So I think that's why creating also opens up your mind to different opportunities and career paths and things that you might have discounted before. I think through starting that podcast, I was doing so much research on athletes and business and athletes and tech and athletes and venture capital. I started my career at PepsiCo in sports and brand marketing. I did not ever think I would one, work in venture capital, two, be a founder, as I just said. So I think starting that kind of gave me just a, a broader way to think about the applications of my skill sets as a marketer. Yeah. What made you, um, what do you feel like you've learned? Cause you've been in business now full time for, uh, what is it about a year now, year and a half, uh, as an entrepreneur. Yes. 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 And, uh, and through that time, how much do you feel like you've learned in just that year and a half compared to the corporate world? So much. I mean, I learned so much in, in both of my first jobs, like, both of those um, experiences gave me so much learning and like resources and network um, to help what I'm doing today as a founder. But like the the speed at which you learn as a founder is is crazy because it's filled of like figuring it out every, every single day, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. every single day. And so, yeah. Yeah, I think that has definitely, that was something I was like reflecting on um, at the end of last year, like, wow, I have learned and grown a lot as, as a person and as a professional. Yeah, let's, let's dive into that, that mental health side a little bit, especially with being a, a, a sport a, in sports and an entrepreneur in itself, I think more so than, than ever. I, I like to get your take on this because I, I personally have 
you know, that same, that same feeling that you got where you're like, oh, you know, I went back, you know, I, I, you have this weird feeling like you're like, I haven't done that much. And then you look back in a whole year and you're like, well, maybe I did, maybe it just didn't happen as the same way that I thought it would. So how do you, how do you really work through with yourself on, you know, really just not putting so much pressure on yourself? Oh, that's a great question. And to that point, what I started this year is I am now starting a tracker of key moments that are happening. And I feel that, I mean, I already journal every day and every night and after every week of business, but um, I felt the same thing at the end of last year. I felt like I didn't even realize how much had happened and I had to go through my calendar week by week. And I made sure to document it just so I could see how much I had grown. And I, that's an exercise I recommend a lot of people do. Like you will actually see like, oh, wow, a lot of progress is made. So this year I'm like every single week I'm sitting down and I'm writing key moments from that week. Um, but yeah, mental health wise, I, I think that is just an important thing to keep in mind and keep top priority as you're building your business. Because like, especially as a creator, a lot of creators are solo founders or solopreneurs. They have support and they have things that they outsource and, you know, things of that nature. But um, like you are your business, Uh, not in the sense that like the business is like your name and like you're, it's all about you. But like, if you are not healthy and you are not feeling inspired and you're not feeling creative, that's going to show up in your work. So I definitely take that like as seriously heading into year two, just like, all right, I'm not a workhorse. I humans are not built to work 24 seven every single day of every single year. And I need to go out and get inspired. I need to take walks. I need to see my friends. I need to come home often. I was doing these things before, but just like not feel guilty when I do them now. And I think that's, I think that's, that is, that's one of the hardest things. I mean, I'm, I'm five and a half close to six years in, And sometimes that stuff gets lost, but Mm -hmm. your mindset does. That's the one thing that I feel like isn't as emphasized in the marketplace of entrepreneurship is, is the mindset shifts that take place to get to one step or another. Cause sometimes you start holding yourself back with certain things because you learn certain things, but then you realize, well, things need to change. And I, I've had to do something very similar, you know, again, like go back. Cause I was at the beginning, like you, like, Oh, doing this, doing this. And I think even three to four years in or five years in that, that, that same stuff. So it is very important. I agree with you. Like I have morning routine. I have a, a small family now, so I have a morning routine um, that I try to stick by. I have my work time and then I have my family time at the end of the day, but also not putting pressure on yourself when some of those things get intermingled a little bit. And I think that's, that's hard. Like you said, we work from home. We, we, you know, um, or even if you have an office either way, like it's harder to separate that mental side of, oh man, I forgot to send that email or, oh, I didn't close that sale or, oh, my monetization isn't happening as fast as I thought it would. Like, what do I, what do I need to change? Like, you know, and yoga, meditate, you know, meditate, uh, I try to meditate, uh, uh, a lot. Um, yeah, that's your journaling. I would take it is writing down your journals and stuff like that. I mean, I have a business developer and, and I just got on a routine again of tracking my daily goals. Like you said, cause if I don't track them now, then I'm not going to be able to track them, you yep. know, a year from now. So, yep. so, uh, no, that's great. And so you, you and I have, you and I have a, a lot in common with some of the things that we like to preach to people. I think I I more so try to go at it from the aspect of for for athletes, for instance, on looking at at their career as more of a business. Um, but I think it's very similar to how you kind of help with the content creation side and helping athletes taking that leap. So why don't you talk to me a little bit more about um, even within your own journey, but some of the things that that you have seen that um, athletes can do to, um, or even even someone in the sports industry can start doing if they want to be a content creator, um, that they can start doing right now that you feel is is probably a first good step. Yeah, I think the first step to being a great creator is being a great learner. Um, so every creator 
that is able to go consistently for years and years and years on end, I, I bet you they are a great learner because ideas don't just like come out of nowhere, right? They don't just like fall in your lap. Like you have to go find out what is that thing for you? Like, what is that thing that you love learning about, you love talking about, or you love connecting with people around? Like, what is that for me? That was athletes and business. It just shows up in different ways throughout my career and throughout my creative projects. For some people, it might be um, investing. It might be athletes and VC. It might be athletes and tech. Um, it doesn't have to be athlete related either. It can be gaming. It can be music. It can be creativity. Like what, whatever it is, I recommend that you find your thing. And the way to find that thing is by learning and exploring. It's not just going to come to you and hit you. Like you have to go through that process. And then after you figure out what that thing is, it's starting before you're ready and like starting to build the habit of communicating either what you find interesting or what can help people from what you're learning. Because I feel like a lot of people wait until uh, they set up the podcast or they wait until they like sign up for Substack or Beehive and have the newsletter ready or they wait until they have the perfect website. But starting before you're ready and building an audience and momentum and rapport that, hey, I talk about these things and I'm passionate about these things and I help people around these things. When you launch the podcast or when you launch the business or the newsletter, it is going to go up and to the right versus you just pop out one day, two years later, after you discovered your passion with a podcast and you're like, Hey, come support this. It's a different dynamic. And so I think that's something a lot of great creators do. It's like, they just start the moment they are inspired and then they stay consistent with it. Yeah. You brought something up very interesting there. Um, is, is the learning aspect. And, Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, or I own a branding agency. I mean, that's what that's what we do, you know. And so I'm I'm a perfection I'm a perfectionist at heart. I've always been a perfectionist, and I've actually had to take a step back, you know, and be like, all right, like this doesn't have to be perfect. Let's go this out. Let's learn, especially yeah. with like our YouTube channel. And I and and the reason I bring that up is because I think that as you talked about with with athletes finding their passion outside the game um, mm-hmm. is grit and perseverance. I think in a lot of what we try to preach when we try to help with is, you know, perseverance isn't about just working hard and getting past something. It's like, you want to find that passion because if you don't find that passion, then it's going to be a lot harder for you to persevere past the hard, past the hard times. Mm -hmm. Um, So have you read, have you read grit? Is that, has that been a book that you've read? I haven't, I need to. It's yeah, it's a, yeah, it's it's a good book. It's a good book. I'll I'll uh, send you. I have a so within within the grit book, it has um this chart, and we use it for a lot of our personal branding stuff. But there's a chart, and it basically goes through a numbered list of of just where you are and, and certain things in your life, and um what you're passionate about, and what your what your why tends to be. And and you know, as an athlete. You know, you, you've, you've really had grit and perseverance through playing the game and, and going through even the corporate world. Um, and it's about finding that, that other passion that, you know, you're really good at, um, and you really enjoy doing. And as athletes, um, you have this capability of, of combining your story with your other passion. And that, that's really what it comes down to. Right. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. It's like, the whole idea of like being multifaceted and athletes realizing that you're actually already multifaceted, like because your whole life you've been doing both, you've been doing your school and your sport, and you've like done those both at the highest level to get you to where you went in college or whether it was professionally. And so a lot of athletes feel like they're starting from scratch when it comes to figuring out like, what do I talk about outside of my jersey or like, what do I do outside of it? But it's like, just channel that ability to be multifaceted and multi-hyphenate and take like that same passion and energy that you pour into your sport and pour it into another outlet. But that's where the learning comes in. It's like, you have to figure out what that thing is for you. Like, don't just follow what other people are doing or what athletes are told to do or like 
launch a merch line because athletes are told they had to launch merch lines one day and every athlete feels like they have to do it. Like maybe a better investment of your time is growing your brand in the direction that you want to go beyond sports and doing that through content. And so that's where I feel like there's just a little bit of a mindset shift of like, what does it actually mean to go and build your brand? Yeah. And I think there's just so much content out there these days that it makes it hard for people. People think that they're going to get that instant gratification. Um, we work with, we work with, uh, um, a company, um, that works with retired athletes. And we, we talk to a lot of the retired athletes and they're always like, how do you do that hack on, on YouTube? Or how do you do that hack on LinkedIn or, or Instagram? And I'm like, hack. there is no hack, <laughs> you know, it's the learning, right? It's the learning. Like you need to learn to, to get past certain hurdles and, and record. And I think that's the one thing that athletes, um, and entrepreneurs tend to, especially at the beginning, tend to be worried about. I mean, I still know I have, I'm I'm still learning to express myself and be vulnerable with certain things. I mean, I think we all are. Um, and one of those things is really come down. It's like, it's okay to fail. It's okay to find things that don't work. It's okay to do this, but expressing that to your audience, because I think that, I think that my, my definition of uh, perfectionism is non-perfectionism, you know, mm-hmm. like you, you can't be, being perfect means you're unperfect, you know, and and that's I think that's how we all are. So why don't you tell me a little bit about like where you're seeing yourself go? Like what are the some of the things that you're seeing in 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 the in the world of sports and entrepreneurship that uh, that you're very passionate about bringing to the world? Yeah, um, I see myself just continuing to iterate on this idea, and I think today, it's about like building the model, right? Building the model of a creator business and like Mm -hmm. walking the talk. I think it's really important for athletes or creators, like when you're listening to people, like have these people done what you are trying to accomplish? I think that's what so many great personal brands or creators or entrepreneurs that break through do. They have that factor of like, I have, tried and failed and tried and failed and figured it out and kept going and found success. And that is all captured in their brand and their business. And that's what makes it great. And so that's why I'm really passionate today about doing what I am teaching to other people. Um, There's this um, founder, Wes Cow of uh, Maven, which is like a creator education platform. And she has this tweet, you should like clip it, I'll send it to you if if you can add it in here. But she was like, personal credibility is more important than a personal brand because especially with chat GPT and all these AI tools, like people can come on the internet and say anything today. Like I I literally went to chat GPT when, when everyone was raving about it in December and was like, write a post about the future of the athlete creator economy. And it, it wrote out this perfect piece that literally sounded like something I would have said. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, if anyone can copy and paste this and put it into like, here's where I think this is going. And here's where I think this is going. What's going to be valuable. People want to learn from people that have done it. And so that's the advice I give to founders that like, cause now founders are also creators too, or we feel like there's pressure to always build our brands and stuff. Um, Like if you don't know where to start, like start talking about what you've done, you know, like start talking about like steps in the, in the journey that you've accomplished. And that's a great way to fuel it back into your business. So it doesn't feel like it's this thing that doesn't connect to what you're doing. Um, But yeah, all I have to say, like today I'm excited about like doing what I'm trying to help other people do. Yeah, I, I love what you said. I, I want to touch on two subjects with what you said there. One, you know, I'm five year, five and a half years in myself. And um, what you said about um, exploring the journey, there's so many, you know, multimillionaires, which we'll get into, we'll get into that in a bit, but um, out there that like, they forget the journey. They forget this journey between, you know, a certain amount of success to, uh, you know, the next step of success. and mm-hmm. So me, I'm at a point now where, you know, I have employees that do certain things. And the hardest challenge for me has been you that my employees don't, they don't see 
or feel like the stuff I do with the growth. And so it's how do you articulate that to the employees so that you can kind of get what you mean to say. But um, with what you said about success, and I think this is a huge one, a huge one right now, especially with all of the stuff out there saying how to make a million dollars tomorrow, how to make $3 million tomorrow, um, which I, it's oh, a cringe I subject it. for me. <laughs> it's such a cringe subject. Um, um, cause it gets clicks for people and I, I get it, but at the same time, I'm like, this isn't valuable, like at the end of the day. And so it puts a lot of stress on athletes, on entrepreneurs, on trying to reach a milestone that honestly, they're not going to be happy once they get there. And so you really mentioned success. And so as you've kind of gone through and, and you've tried, started to develop your business, what has your mindset shifted to towards what has been success to you? Like, what do you consider to be success? Oh, I love that. These are great questions. Um, <laughs> no, I, I love that. I think it's just a, a great way to talk about like the journey of building a brand or a business that isn't like all in the tactics. Um, so I think success is like one doing what I said I'm going to do. And that's on the point of like personal accountability. I think that is really, really, really what success is. Um, there are like a few books that, you know, those books, like it's probably like grit for you. Um, there's a couple for me that will always stand out as like, wow, this book like got me together or like it, it came in my life at the moment that I needed it. Sure, um, crazy how that happens. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, but one of them was, we should all be millionaires um, by Rachel Rogers, amazing uh, black woman entrepreneur. And then another one was the 12 week year, um, which to me wasn't so much about the 12 week year. It's about the difference of execution and that being the key factor of like people that don't do what they say they're going to do and the people that break out and find success. So I think success to me is like doing what I say I'm going to do and being consistent and holding myself accountable to making, to like taking this, this risk and making it happen. Like if you are going to step out and uh, try to build something from zero, like show up for yourself and do that. And to me, that is success. So like, I think success is in like the daily moments of that for me. And then also I think success is like um, corny, but like the impact, like when you actually see that what you are doing is working. Um, and I was just talking about this with another creator podcaster the other day. It's like every creative has a bunch of things that they try that do not work and like actually like flop and are cringe and are just like, okay, this did not go how I thought it was going to be. And then all those things lead to the thing that does work. And like you, the creator always knows when they've come across that thing, like, okay, this is it. Like I have found like content market fit, which is like, you know, product market fit in the startup world, but for creators like content market fit, like mm -hmm. I have found where my creativity, where the output connects with my audience. And it's just, and it just takes off. And I feel like even regardless of like what your audience size is, whether it's like a million or a hundred thousand or in the hundreds, like I feel like creators should define that as success. Like if this is actually connecting with people in a world where we all literally just scroll, 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 and you don't remember whose post you just saw, if people are literally going out their way to be like, hey, this left a big impact or they're commenting or they're sharing or they're telling someone, hey, I shared this this episode with this person, like you should count that as success. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. And to all our listeners out there, I mean, it's okay for success to, you know, switch and change. I mean, I'm, I, I like to, I like to always promote where I'm at in business and my failures and my, and my passions, because I'm not perfect. We we've tried just as many things all the time. I mean, one of the biggest things we're doing right now and me personally is, you know, me owning a business and being a content creator on the side is I got really in routine of getting scripts written, going through the going through the internal of just being by the computer and writing, you know, speaking off the script. 
I'm at the point now, like my year goal has just been, I'm going to be more vulnerable. Like I need to be more vulnerable. I need to start speaking and, and, and going past certain pain points because I'm in the evolution of my business. And so I've just now started to, you know, be more open to freestyling my videos. And I'm actually in the process right now of learning public speaking because I'm like, you know what, like I need to hit past this fear point if I really want to hit my purpose. And so it's okay to have different success points and, and be able to succeed. But if money is the only way people will look at success, um, then we'd all be lonely <laughs> and I'll be stressed. I'll be stressed. No, I love that. I love that success. It's a, it's a, it's a huge topic. Um, so yeah, I don't really like to get into the, I don't really like to get into the tangent, like the, 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 the technical stuff, because I do feel like success is what you said. I feel like it really comes down to mental health and being able to, because we're entrepreneurs. And I feel like the hardest part of being an entrepreneur is, you know, we may have family, nothing wrong with family, nothing wrong with friends that support us. But if they're not in business, then they don't understand, you know, they don't understand the grind. Um, and so finding like-minded individuals who go through the same pain points, it's, it's always, it's always nice. It's always nice to, have a community around that stuff. I, I like to consider it community branding, not personal branding, not corporate branding. I like to consider it community branding. So, um, and I, I'm, I'm going to take that one that you said, you said it's called a, a content, content fit. I think that's a great way to put it because I think a lot of people stress about finding their audience. Um, and sometimes even if you do the prep, like your audience evolves and grows and changes. And so, Sometimes that fit happens funny enough naturally, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so why don't you tell me a little bit about um, some of your community? Like who who are the types of people and who are the the types of inspiration that you've had that, that have helped you kind of um, continue to evolve yourself and have helped you get through some of those tough times? Definitely. I have a great community of, I mean, well, one, like family and friends, but um, just great community in sports, just being an athlete, working in the sports industry before starting my company. Um, so it's always great when it doesn't feel like, you know, networking, like these people oh, at yeah. these companies are just my friends. Um, so that's great. Have a great founder community. That's really important to me. Mm -hmm. um, in my first year, just like connecting with other founders, but also other founders that have similar businesses or business aspirations. Like I'm not building a startup. I'm not raising venture capital funding. And so being able to talk to people, other creators basically, um, that are also entrepreneurs is very, very helpful on the journey. Um, and then also just, you know, people that have a completely outside perspective, like don't know anything about sports, don't know anything about the creator economy, but they still like are incredibly supportive and still let you know that they resonate with like what you're doing and that it's like helping them somehow. I think that's really important too. So like you have your community in your industry, you have your community of people that are doing similar things. Um, but I think it's also important to like diversify and just make sure you're getting inspiration from other places. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, one thing that that you mentioned there was, uh, you know, that really brought up a memory of mine is is anytime I get like a, a comment on, you know, Instagram or LinkedIn, where a community member of mine has been like, you've really helped me pass this hurdle. You've really helped me pass this like that. that that's my where I feel my purpose is, is, is you're aware, like, that's what keeps you going is knowing that you're helping, knowing that you're helping other people. Yeah. 100%. 100%. So where do you see yourself going? Like what what have you you started journaling, you started doing all this stuff and so as you've continued to evolve and try stuff yourself, what are you starting to really see with the evolution of of your brand? Yeah, I mean I think it's um 
only going to grow from here, not to sound cocky, but I just like, you know, if you're, if you, if you are someone going back to the point of like, how do you define success? Like if you're someone that holds yourself to showing up every single day and like being consistent and putting in the outputs and like really simplifying what that looks like, you know, for me early in entrepreneurship, I, I felt like I had to do everything and I felt like scattered and I was like, Oh my God, like, how do I simplify this? And like, for me, I've been able coming into year two, I've been able to get clear on like, what are the key things? It's posting daily on LinkedIn. It's doing what I need to do with my podcast. It's networking. It's this, it's that like just simplifying everything and breaking it down into monthly, weekly, daily things that I need to do. And so I feel like from here, it just continues to grow because you hold yourself to that, to those things. Um, so yeah, like I'm excited for the podcast to grow. Um, I'm excited for the community around the podcast to, um, really just show the power of community driven brands in a world that has so much content. Um, so yeah, like I'm, I'm excited for everything to like, just come together because, you know, like we've been talking about this whole conversation, like the, the, what do you call it? The, um, the business wouldn't have started if I hadn't started that podcast years ago when I wasn't trying to start a business. Mm -hmm. The community that's naturally gravitating around what, what I'm doing wouldn't have started if I hadn't just genuinely built relationships with a lot of people in similar places with similar passions along all of these years. And so now as an entrepreneur, it's like, how do you bring these things together to really just create a Trojan horse? Yeah, you really you've really learned the mindset thing a lot sooner than it took me to because I, I look back, I look back now and um it's it's funny how energy and putting out there um of just wanting to be a good person and you know help people really moves things along. And and for example, I mean, there's been plenty of times, like you said, like it may not be a channel, it may be when I get a client or it may be something where I'm like, Oh, like I have to help this type of company or I have to help this, but funny enough, like two months earlier, I had a situation that, that did not go through that failed that I had to learn that. And then two months later, I get an even better opportunity that comes up. And I'm like, well, now I know this, how did this just happen? Like two months ago, it's yeah. crazy how the world works and how energy really goes your way. If you just stay positive and try to weed out all that negative energy. Definitely. I'm a big, big energy person. If things, if things don't align with my energy or if things disrupt my energy it has to go. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing a, an exercise right now. Um, um, have you ever read, um, uh, it's a long title. It's a long title. It's basically how it's, it's something along the lines of how to love yourself. Um, hmm. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty decent book and it really just signifies to kind of look back and love yourself. But one of the exercises that I'm I'm setting into my agenda for the next week is I'm I'm going to sit down and and write down all of the things in the past that I may have regretted or done. And I'm gonna go just go out into the wilderness for two to three hours and burn it. <laughs> yeah. It's it's I I'm a, I'm afraid to. I have this fear. I have this fear of trying to, you know, combine these two situations, but um, I'm trying to get past that limiting belief myself. So, but I, uh, I totally get what you're saying. Energy is a huge thing. And um, just trying to get away from the, just trying to get away from the the ever growing, like you said, mine's all over the place all the time. And it's, it's when you can sit down and, and uh, you know, even if your 10 year goal, your five year goal, your one year goal aren't like set, they don't have to be set in stone, you know, just kind of you know, set them down and rough. And then, then you can break it down to small wins for yourself for the week. Exactly. Exactly. Live in the moment. Live. So what is a, what is a, a win that you feel like that you have done? And we'll just say the past week that you, you would like to share with the audience. Ooh, um, the podcast launch has been very successful so that's what I was alluding to. And I was like, you try a bunch of things that don't work mm -hmm. and then you find a thing that does work. And when it works, it works. And so I'm just incredibly grateful for just the reception, how excited the guests are, 
Like that's the goal. Every podcast host, your goal is to make your guests look great and to make them feel special and to have them be the star of the show, like from end to end, whether it's like booking them to having the conversation to how it's promoted, like it's about them. And that makes them even more excited to shout it to the rooftops when it comes out and publish all the clips and all that stuff. And like, it's just been such a great um, response. Like I'm, I'm so excited to just double down on it. I think that goes back to what you said, what we talked about earlier with, with value and um, giving value to other people doesn't necessarily have to be like, I'm going to do this service for you for free can be down to, <laughs> you know, I think a lot of people, think that. That. <laughs> you know, so much advice on Twitter. That's like, if you want to start like a, an agency or a business, like make, find a skill offer to do it for free and then you'll get clients. I'm like, no, like, don't listen to that. Yeah, I agree. Don't, I agree. Don't do that. Because you will, like, you have to establish boundaries with yourself yes. and show other people how to treat you too. And yes. so you're always doing things for free. By the time you ask people for money, it's going to be too late. Yeah. And, and yeah, not to get a little bit cringe on that, but yeah, a lot of, a, a lot of people that you'll be doing stuff for free will just, you know, bring more people that will want stuff for free. So <laughs> that's just how it works. Um, and it, nothing against people, but if you don't set those expectations and you don't ask, or you don't learn to ask, or you don't learn to do that stuff, there's nothing wrong with charging, charging money. Um, but back to the value side, like you said, like that's the value. I mean, our YouTube channel, for instance, like I spend thousands on, you know, every month on getting that up to try to bring value to our audience, um, yeah. to try to teach them. And that's, that's part of like how I feel like I'm giving back, like, okay, like this is an expense. Okay. I, it's really an investment for me because I'm helping other people. Um, yeah. and so that's great. I love to hear that with your podcast. That's a good win. That probably, that probably gives you a grin on your face, a yeah. grin on your face when you wake up every morning. And it's, it's part of the helping to give back. And I love that. I love that. Um, and so, yeah, I think we're getting close to an hour. So why don't we, why don't we try to s slow things down a little bit towards the end here? And why don't you tell people a little bit more about where they can find you? Um, and, uh, how they could reach out with to you if they need anything. Yes. Um, so you can find the New Game Labs podcast on YouTube um, and then also on Instagram and LinkedIn. So those are our core three channels, but all the episodes are published on YouTube. So keep an eye out for those. And then um, you can connect with me on Twitter or LinkedIn, Kirby Porter on both channels, not a lot of Kirby's in the world. So you should be able to find me. Um, and yeah, like I, I definitely encourage people listening. If you've made it this far to like check out the podcast as a starting point and just like get a sense of the vision, basically, like how, how do you help sports creators and, and athletes in this new way? So that'd be a great starting point. If you have any questions, please reach out. All right. Well, thanks for uh, being on the, another episode of the Brand Power Analysis and have a good week. Get those wins. Get those wins. Get those wins.